Let's say uh, we, we take as the basic supposition, which is the thing that one sees in the experience of Satori or, or awakening or whatever you want to call it, that this now moment in which I'm talking and you're listening is eternity. That although we have somehow conned ourselves into the notion that this moment is rather ordinary and that we may not feel very well and that uh, we're sort of vaguely frustrated and worried and so on and that it ought to be changed. This is it. So you don't need to do anything at all. But the difficulty about explaining that is that don't, you, you mustn't try not to do anything because that's doing something. And how to explain that? Because there's nothing to explain. It's the, it, it, it is the way it is now, you see. And if you understand that, it will automatically wake you up. That's why Zen teachers use shock treatment. To uh, sometimes while they hit people or shout at them or cr create a sudden surprise. Because it is that jolt that <coughs> suddenly brings you here. See, there's no road to here because you're already there. And if you ask me, how am I going to get here? It'll be like the famous story of the American tourist in England who asked some yokel the way to Upper Tottenham, a little village. And the yokel scratched his head and he said, Well, sir, I do know where it is, but if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, when you ask, how do I attain the knowledge of God? How do I attain nirvana, liberation? All I can say is it's the wrong question. Why do you want to attain it? Because the very fact that you're wanting to attain it is the only thing that prevents you from getting there. You already have it. But of course, uh, it's, it's up to you. It's your privilege to pretend that you don't. That's your game. That's your life game. That's what makes you think you're an ego. And uh, when you want to wake up, you will. Just like that. If you're not awake, it shows you don't want to. You're, you're still playing the hide part of the game. You're still, as it were, the, the, the self, pretending it's not the self. And that's what you want to do. So you see, in that way too, you're already there. When you understand this, a funny thing happens. And some people uh, misinterpret it. You will discover, as this happens, that the distinction between voluntary and involuntary behavior disappears. You will realize that what you describe as things under your own will feel exactly the same as things going on outside you. You watch other people moving and you know you're doing that. Just like you're breathing or circulating your blood. If you don't understand what's going on, you're liable to get crazy at this point and to feel that you are God in the Jehovah sense. To say that you actually have power over other people so that you could alter what they're doing and that you are omnipotent in a very crude, literal kind of Bible sense, you see? And uh, a lot of people feel that and they go crazy. They have to put them away. They think they're Jesus Christ and that everybody ought to fall down and worship. That's only they got their wires crossed. They haven't been able to, this experience happened to them, but they don't know how to interpret it. So be careful of that. Jung calls it inflation. People who get the holy man syndrome, that uh, I've suddenly discovered that I'm the Lord and that I'm above good and evil and so on and that, that uh, therefore I start giving myself airs and graces. But the point is everybody else is too. If you discover that you're that, then you ought to know that everybody else is.
let's say 